Hey everybody, today is Wednesday, November 15th, 2023, and we are here in Hershey, Pennsylvania, the town built by chocolate, and we are at the Hershey Cemetery on this very, very chilly November morning. Bear with me as I try my best not to freeze to death during this video, but the reason why we are out here today is to take a look at the graves of two very important chocolate pioneers. If you are like me, and you are a big fan of candy, a big fan of chocolate, then of course the name Hershey probably holds a soft spot in your heart. It definitely does for me. I grew up eating Hershey chocolate bars and other Hershey confectionery candies. They do own many different brands. They own Jolly Rancher, they own Twizzlers, they own Reese's, many different brands of confectionaries, some chocolate, some not, that Hershey owns. And I grew up eating pretty much every single one of them. I am a big, big, big fan of Hershey's candies. And today, again, we're going to take a look at the graves of two men associated with the, with the name Hershey's and who are, again, pioneers in the world of chocolate, pioneers in the world of candy. And the first grave we're going to take a look at is the focal point of the Hershey Cemetery, which makes sense. This is the family plot of the Hershey family. And buried right up here is the grave of the king of chocolate himself, the pioneer of milk chocolate here in the United States, in Pennsylvania, the grave of Milton S. Hershey, buried right here. Born September 13th, 1857, died October 13th, 1945. Right here, the grave of Milton S. Hershey. If you've ever eaten a Hershey bar and you've loved it like I have, you have this man right here to thank for that. The story of Milton S. Hershey and how he became synonymous with the Hershey chocolate brand is actually quite fascinating because he, he did not start out by making chocolate. He actually had a very successful caramel company, the Lancaster Caramel Company that again was very successful. He made it with a, a different kind of process using, using fresh milk. And again, the, the company took off. It did very well. He was very successful in making caramel. But after a trip to the World's Fair, he, he became completely in love with the, the German technique of making milk chocolate. And he became obsessed with the idea of making milk chocolate. So he sold off his very successful caramel company in 1900 for $1 million, took that money and started the Hershey chocolate company and started to produce milk chocolate. So it's kind of crazy to think that you have this very successful candy company making caramels or, or caramels. People, people love it. You're doing very well. You're successful. You're providing for your family and just kind of on a whim because you fell in love with a different type of candy. On a whim, you say, I'm going to sell my company off and I'm going to start a completely different company making completely different candies. And I have no idea if it's going to be successful. I have no idea if it's going to work. I'm just kind of doing this on a whim because I like the idea of making milk chocolate. Crazy, crazy idea. Very, I just, I, I couldn't imagine giving up something so successful to, to just try something else. But you need people like that in the world. You need people who take those risks, who, I'm standing in the sun, who take those risks, who take those chances, who say, you know what, just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something different and we'll see where it goes. We'll see where the wind takes me. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. And for Milton S. Hershey, it definitely worked. His company became one of, if not the biggest chocolate company in the entire world. A risk taker. And that risk paid off for him. The first Hershey chocolate bar was actually produced in 1900. Then in 1907, they came out with the Hershey Kiss. And I, for one, love Hershey Kisses. I'm a big fan of, I, I just love, I love almonds when it comes to chocolate. So I am a big fan of the, um, the Hershey Kisses with the almonds 
inside them. But I just love Hershey Kisses in general. They're kind of like the perfect shape, the perfect size, just that that bite that bite size of chocolate. They are they are pretty amazing. I do love them. And for me, they're synonymous with this time of the year, with Christmas time, because when I think of Hershey Kisses, I always think of going to my my aunt's house for Christmas, and she'd always have a bowl of Hershey Kisses wrapped in that tinfoil, in the in the red, green, and I believe silver tinfoil that Hershey puts out every single year. And I remember my brother and I just sneaking the, for, throughout the whole night, before dinner, after dinner, my mom would yell at us, say, stop taking the Hershey Kisses. And we'd always kind of walk by and sneak a Hershey Kiss out of the out of the bowl, go off to another room, unwrap them, eat them. I love, again, Hershey Kisses. And for me, they always make me think of Christmas, which is my all-time favorite holiday. So just very warm feelings when it comes to, uh, very warm feelings. I, I wish I was warm right now. Very warm feelings when it comes to Hershey Kisses and just my memories of them during the holiday season. It just, again, I, I, I love them. And of course you have that that classic commercial they play every year of the, the Jingle Bells with the, the Hershey Kisses actually being the bells. It's the, um, the, the, the We Wish You a Merry Christmas song. It plays, I guess it's not Jingle Bells, it's We Wish You a Merry Christmas, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And it's the, it's the Hershey Kisses dinging as bells. It's awesome. I love that commercial. By far, one of my all-time favorite Christmas commercials. And it's a Hershey commercial at that. And then in 1908, Hershey invented my all-time favorite Hershey candy bar, which would have to be Hershey with almonds. I just, I cannot get enough of those. I buy those literally by the pack load. I go out to places like Target, and buy full packs of those. I love Hershey with almonds. They are delicious. They are amazing. And again, it was invented in 1908. So very quickly from the start, the Hershey company producing their, their chocolates became a hit. So from one successful candy making company producing caramels, producing caramels, to a very another successful candy company producing milk chocolate. Another interesting story about Milton Hershey is the fact that he was supposed to have been on the Titanic. In 1912, he had a booking for the RMS Titanic on its maiden and final voyage. Crazy to think about the fact that Milton Hershey could have been on the Titanic and passed away on the Titanic. Most likely, he would not have been put onto a lifeboat. He would not have survived. He would have went down with his ship like many other men did that night. Pretty, pretty crazy to think about. He had to cancel his reservation at the very last minute due to some business he had to attend to. Can you imagine, though, a couple days later, you hear about the sinking of the Titanic and you think to yourself, I was supposed to be on that ship. I was supposed to have been there. I would not have, I would not have survived. I would, I would have died. I can't imagine thinking about how that those weird, just sort of twist and turn turns that your, your life makes because of a business issue he had to deal with. He was not able to make it onto the Titanic. He canceled his reservation at the very last minute. Had he not had to attend to those business issues at the very last minute, he could have been on the on the ship. Again, crazy to think about. I, I would love, I love if I, if I had to if if Milton Hershey would would appear to me right now. If he were to just pop up right here, and I could ask him one question, I would say, "What were your thoughts?" when you found out about the Titanic. What went through your mind the day you read in the newspaper that the Titanic, the RMS Titanic, sank? What, what went through your mind? What were you thinking? You must have been so grateful that you canceled your reservation, that you did not make it on to that ship. I would love to hear what its thoughts were. My thoughts, I don't know. I'd be, I'd be counting my blessings. Very lucky man a very lucky man and a very smart man because one of the other reasons why Hershey chocolate became so popular, especially after World War II, was the fact that the Hershey bar was part of the D-rations. When the men went off to fight in World War II, they had these D 
D-ration packs that had all kinds of different foods and, and stuff in them they would need to survive. And they included little Hershey chocolate bars, but they had to make chocolate bars that could withstand certain temperatures, that, that would not melt, that would stand up to basically war conditions. And Milton S. Hershey invented the chocolate that would withstand those temperatures, would, we, would withstand essentially being at war with the men fighting over fighting over seas. And then when those men returned home, the ones that were lucky enough to have returned home from the war, they of course craved that chocolate. They craved the, the chocolate they were eat, eating in those, those D rations and they would go out and they would buy Hershey chocolate bars. So smart move on the on the planning of, of Hershey. I don't know if he, if, he, if he thought that far ahead. I don't know if he thought, ooh, if we put, if we put chocolate bars into these men's D-rations, then they're gonna come home and want, want more of that taste. They're gonna want more of the, the taste of that familiar chocolate they had while overseas. Don't know if he would've thought that far ahead. Maybe he would, he was a very smart man. Maybe he thought that far ahead, or maybe it was just, again, some more luck on the part of Milton Hershey that he provided chocolate for the men during World War II in the D-rations. And because of that, those men came home and they wanted more chocolate. And this chocolate sales soared because of that. So smart planning on his part or just more luck on his part? I don't know. I might go with luck. Milton S. Hershey, one of the, again, the very smart man, a very creative man, but also I'm gonna say a very lucky man. It seemed like luck was on his side. It just, it, he had some, some hard times growing up, but he made the best of them and things definitely turned out well for, for Milton S. Hershey. So the reason why we are in Hershey, Pennsylvania right now, the reason why this town even exists is because once again, the smart thinking of Milton S. Hershey who built a town around his chocolate factory. Again, very smart thinking. You want to have employees, you want to have them nearby, you want them and their families to be happy. So what do you do? You build houses, you build churches, you build stores all around your, your chocolate factory for those men and their families to work in. And thus you have a, a happy, a happy town of, of workers all, all living right next to and right around your, your factory. And thus Hershey, Pennsylvania was founded. So again, it is a town built on chocolate. The reason why this town exists, the reason why it's called Hershey, Pennsylvania is not just because of the, the fact that there is the factory here. It's because of the town that was built up and around the factory for the sake of making chocolate. So when they say Hershey, Pennsylvania is the town built on chocolate, it is literally built on chocolate. Once again, because of the creative thinking of Milton S. Hershey. That is why I love this man. And that is why I find his life so fascinating and the ideas he had and the things he came up with and the, just the, the ingenuity of Milton S. Hershey. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm very fascinated with what this man did and what he created. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we are here at the Hershey family plot where Milton S. Hershey is buried, dying of pneumonia at the age of 88 in 1945. And he is buried next to his wife, Catherine Sweeney, AKA Kitty, who was born July 6th, 1872 and passed away March 25th, 1915. And then next to them is Milton S. Hershey's mother, Fanny B. Hershey, and his father, Henry H. Hershey. So pretty awesome to come out here and see the grave of Milton S. Hershey, the founder of the Hershey Chocolate Company. Those delicious chocolate bars you eat probably multiple times a year. If you're like me, hundreds probably of times a year you can come out here and see the grave of the man who created that, the man who is responsible for putting all those pounds on your belly, but the man you love for doing so because his chocolate's so delicious. And then you can see the graves of his wife 
and his parents as well. Pretty awesome to come out here and just and see the family plot of the Hershey family of Milton S. Hershey, his wife and his mother and his father. But as I also mentioned in the beginning of this video, we're out here to see the grave of two chocolate pioneers, Hershey only being one of them. Now, even though I am a huge fan of traditional Hershey products like the Hershey chocolate bar or uh, again, Hershey with almonds or even Hershey kisses, I might actually say I am a slightly bigger fan of some of the other confectionaries that Hershey has obtained over the years. Some of the other different brands that have become part of the Hershey family over the last X amount of decades. And one of them in particular is one of my all time favorite candies and produces some of my all time favorite candies. And that is the Reese's Chocolate Company. I am a huge fan of Reese's peanut butter cups. I'm gonna say probably within my top five all time favorite candies, Reese's peanut butter cups. You stick them in the refrigerator. I don't freeze them. I don't really care for them at room temperature, but you put them in the refrigerator and they are some of the most delicious candies in the entire world. And buried right next to Milton S. Hershey, again, right, right there is the grave of Milton S. Hershey, his family plot being right there, right across the road is the grave of H.B. Reese, the inventor of just one of the greatest candies ever made, the Reese's peanut butter cup. Finding the grave of H.B. Reese is actually really, really easy, but it can be kind of confusing. So I'm going to, to help you out with this. Again, right over there is the family plot of Milton S. Hershey. You just simply walk across the roadway and the first thing you're going to see is this very promising looking grave that says Reese on it. It even has Reese kind of done in the cursive writing of the Reese's logo. And then you're gonna see Harry B. Reese there and Harry B. Reese the third there. So you might be thinking, I've done it. I have found the grave of H. B. Reese. Somebody apparently thought they found the grave of H. B. Reese because they did leave a Reese's wooden cutout here on the grave. But this is not the grave we're looking for. Again, can be very confusing. There are many Hershey's buried in the cemetery, many Reese's buried in the cemetery, but the grave we're looking for is kind of catty corner to that grave. It's the grave right over here. This is the grave we want to find the grave of Harry Burnett Reese, 1879 to 1956, who is buried right here. As you can see, somebody has come out here and left some, some mementos for Reese's and their, their amazing Reese's peanut butter cups because right here, buried right here, is the man responsible for creating the Reese's peanut butter cup, one of if not possibly the greatest chocolate candy ever made. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's common knowledge, but if you do know at least a little bit of the history of the Hershey Company, then you probably know that Harry Burnett Reese used to actually work for the Hershey Company. He was an employee of Milton S. Hershey. However, he used to experiment in his basement making different types of chocolate confectionaries using the chocolate of Milton Hershey, some of them being somewhat successful, making his family a little bit of extra money, things like chocolate covered almonds. Again, you, you just can't go wrong covering an almond in chocolate. But it was in 1928 that H.B. Reese would have his Eureka moment. He had a customer who was having supply issues with another company that made peanut butter that was covered with chocolate. And H.B. Reese thought, I can do that. I can. I can make a confectionery that consists of peanut butter covered in chocolate. And it was at that point that the Reese's peanut butter cup was invented. He created an, created an automated way of making Reese's peanut butter cups, sold them for one cent a piece. And the rest is, is history. The world has been enjoying one of, if not possibly the greatest 
chocolate confectionery ever made. As much as I love the combination of almonds and chocolate, peanut butter and chocolate, you just, you really can't beat that combination. And a Reese's peanut butter cup is just the perfect ratio of chocolate to peanut butter. It just, it's perfect. Like that, that every single bite of a Reese's peanut butter cup is absolutely amazing. And I can't get enough of them since 1982. I have been eating them and I will probably be on my deathbed asking for a Reese's peanut butter cup. It was in 1963, six years after the passing of H.B. Reese, that his sons would merge the Reese's company with the Hershey company, thus forever cementing the name Reese's with Hershey and the Reese's peanut butter cup with the Hershey company. Probably a smart idea to, to merge the two chocolate conglomerates located here in Hershey, Pennsylvania together. And I, for one, am very happy they did that because now I can get my, my Reese's products from the Hershey company, from Hershey Park and the, the Hershey store they have only right down the road. I still think the Reese's peanut butter cup and Reese's pieces and all the other different candies that, um, that Reese's produces would probably still be around to this day had they not merged, but I'm sure it didn't hurt. And I'm just happy that to this very day, I can still enjoy a Reese's peanut butter cup. And the more I talk about them, the more I really want to get one now. But all right, guys, I do think that is just about going to do it for our time here at the Hershey Cemetery, taking a look at the graves of two chocolate pioneers, two men who revolutionized the world of candy. Harry Burnett Reese, the inventor of the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, the founder of the Reese's Company, and Milton S. Hershey, the inventor of all those delicious chocolate bars we grew up eating and the founder of the Hershey's Company. Two men literally buried a stone's throw away from each other. Two men who at one point worked together, then two men who became rivals with rival companies only to, after their death, find those rivaling companies merged into one with the Reese's brand now being under the name of the Hershey's brand. Pretty awesome to be able to come out here and see these two very important graves of two very important men in the world of chocolate, in the world of candy. Pretty awesome and amazing place. I would highly recommend coming out here if you like visiting cemeteries, if you are a big fan of Hershey's products or Reese's products or just chocolate and candy in general, you are definitely gonna wanna come out here and see the grave of H.B. Reese right over there and Milton S. Hershey right over here. Pretty awesome, but all right guys, that's gonna do it. I don't know if you can hear off in the distance, sounds like gunshots or something. If you're, if you're from the Hershey, Pennsylvania area, what does that sound? What is making that, that noise? Comments down below because it sounds like gunshots and it has me concerned. So, all right, guys, with that, we are gonna go. So, as always, thank you all so much for checking out this video. Be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Weird. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Check down below for links to Patreon. If you guys do become a patron, I will send you a postcard every single month from the road. Also check down below for a link to Spreadshirt where you can grab yourself retro rest stop t-shirts proceeds both from Spreadshirt and from Patreon to help support the show and they keep the show going. It brings us out to awesome and amazing places like this. This is located about an hour and a half away from my house so took a little bit of gas to to get out of here but it's worth it to see these amazing graves. So check down below for those links. I would really appreciate the help and if you guys watch this video all the way until the very end, let's just hashtag I love chocolate. If you guys watch this video all the way until the very end, hashtag I love chocolate to show your love for these two men who invented some of, if not the greatest chocolate candies in the world. So, all right, guys, again, that is going to do it. So, like I said, hit that like button hit that subscribe button. And if you do hit that subscribe button or you are subscribed, then I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. One last look 
at the HB Reese grave. Again, it's not, it's not that one. It's not that one. Can be a little confusing. It's the one right over here. Obviously, you can never miss the, the Hershey grave. It's this grave, right? Right here. All right, guys. That's going to do it. So, like I said, thanks for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right. Have a good one, guys. Bye.